This is Valley News Live at noon. We begin today with breaking news. Someone drove into the Little Caesars building on 1775 45th Street south in Fargo. It happened about an hour ago as the driver was leaving the drive through Fire officials say either food fell on the floor or some sort of distraction happened and the wheel kept turning while the driver's foot stayed on the gas. No one was hurt and there's no word on who the driver was. Now, people in the South Fargo neighborhood were told to shelter in place after police say a man poured gasoline in a home and threatened to start it on fire. The situation started around 2.30 this morning at 1717 13th and a half street south. A woman and child were evacuated from the home while neighbors were told to shelter in place. Police set up a perimeter and shut off the gas to the home while they tried to contact with or communicate with that man. Now, Tristan Olson was arrested. He received medical attention before being booked into the Cass County Jail for terrorizing. The Becker County Sheriff's Office has identified a man whose death is being investigated as a work-related accident in Utabon. The body of 43-year-old Joseph Boyle was found on the ground next to some equipment in the parking lot of Team Industries. Emergency responders found the northern metal recycling semi-truck with the hydraulic bed extension resting against an overhead power line. Well, new at noon, a Grand Forks homeowner is asking for your help identifying a man who they say was caught on their home security cameras breaking into their backyard and using the hot tub. It happened Sunday just before 4 in the morning in the neighborhood behind the Paradiso Mexican restaurant. This is near the 900 block of South 12th Street. The homeowner says their hot fil tub fil filter excuse me, was broken and the hose was ripped out and thrown into the yard. They say the man could also be heard banging on the patio door, trying to get inside the home, but thankfully the man was unsuccessful. If you have any information, call Grand Forks Police. Well, the temperatures are warming up and are nothing to play with if it's not prepared. Let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green. Lisa, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. The hot streak is continuing, actually. We just hit 90 degrees in Fargo for the second day in a row, and we're just going to build off of that, not only today, but as we head into the weekend, too. So that's a new update. We're now at 90 again in Fargo. Other places, well into the 80s in eastern North Dakota, upper 80s, not too far off from 90 in Jamestown and in Sisseton. Over to the east, we've had more clouds. We have some showers that have been in that area off and on and we're so we're into the 70s to low 80s there as a result of that. And you can see these clouds and showers just kind of slowly making their way south and eastward here today. And there's some of this that does extend into eastern North Dakota. The majority of it though more into Minnesota and zooming in on this area. You could see there's some places where we may have a few of those showers producing a, a quick little downpour in those areas of yellow, but mostly this is super light or perhaps not even reaching the ground as it continues working its way to the south and east. So this afternoon, more places warming into the 90s. 93 in Fargo, we might have to bump that up a little bit as our temperatures continue to rise. And 90 in Grand Forks, southeastern North Dakota, making our way into the low to mid 90s today. And over to the east, more likely into the mid to some upper 80s coming up for later today. Tomorrow, we really make a temperature leap. We're talking records potentially, uh, and we're going to have details on that and what you can do to stay cool and stay safe as this uh, heat wave, the first one of the summer, hits and it's in full swing now. We'll stay tuned with you to find out what we should be doing and what to expect. Thanks, Lisa. Well, as the heat moves into the valley, people are turning on their air conditioners and fans, and that leads to more electricity use. Utility companies say even with a spike in demand, they don't foresee any power interruptions. They say they have enough capacity to provide reliable service during a surge in electrical use, but they do suggest ways to conserve energy during hot weather. They can keep their blinds closed during the day, keep the sun out of the home, set their air conditioner back, set the thermostat back to conserve energy. You know, basically turning things off, appliances, you know, cooking outdoors always helps in the summer too, rather than firing up your oven, you don't get the grill out, do that kind of thing. Bruce. Brusso says Cass County Electric has never had an increase instance where there was so much demand that they couldn't serve their customers during an increase of usage. Their coal, wind, and hydro resources allowed them the opportunity for enough electrical capacity. Well, these warm temperatures can be a pleasant change from the cold, but dangerous if you're not prepared. It will take breaks when you can. Find shade, hydrate, or put a cool washcloth on your neck. Drink at least eight glasses of water to stay hydrated. And health officials say sports drinks are fine as long as they're not high with sugar. 
Your body will always tell you when something is not okay. Um, you start that, that whole point of getting to heat exhaustion, to heat stroke, which then can lead to death, but you can also have um, long-term effects of constant exposure to heat without properly um, taking care of yourself. Sunblock is a lifesaver. Reapply often when sweating. Cover your head with like a hat and wear light colored and loose fitting clothing. Hot water is prompting water restrictions in the city of Barnesville. You can't water your lawn between 10 in the morning and 7 at night, and homeowners are restricted based on their odd or even house number address. Now, watering flowers, gardens, trees, and shrubs is allowed, but you can't leave a running hose unattended. There is a $25 fine for the first time you're caught, and $50 right after that. Details of the Barnesville restrictions are on our website, valleynewslive.com. Republican legislative leaders are making a new push for ending Minnesota Governor Tim Walz's reliance on emergency powers to manage the pandemic. The bill would preserve Walz's ability to procure and distribute vaccines and to obtain federal aid while restoring the normal balance of power between the governor and legislator. But a Walz spokesperson says it would slow down vaccination, jeopardize hundreds of millions of dollars in federal hunger relief, and end the eviction moratorium overnight. Fire destroyed two sheds and everything in them in Levi, Minnesota, Lindby, Minnesota, in Polk County, and the fire was called in just before six last night. The sheriff's office says no one was hurt, and the fire appears to be accidental. Crews with Minneapolis Public Works started dismantling the George Floyd Memorial early this morning in an attempt to reopen it to traffic. The move came as a surprise to many community members and may have gathered at the intersection where Floyd was murdered more than one year ago. Christine Cordero is at the scene with the latest. Bulldozers drove through George Floyd Square, removing barricades, artwork, and flowers. The work began overnight, unbeknownst to many community members. I got up to do my morning yoga and was changing the laundry, and I looked out the window, and I saw everything. This was not, absolutely was not known about at all. Many of the locals have since been at the intersection in an effort to protect the memorial. It was here a little more than a year ago that Floyd was killed at the hands of police. Earlier, some scuffles broke out and crews with the Minneapolis Public Works Department temporarily left the scene. Officials here in Minneapolis said that they tried to include the community in conversations about how to reopen this intersection. You can see what they have planned, right, indicating by that sign that this will turn into a roundabout, protecting that memorial at the center, yet making it a functional street once again. The city is working with a community group known as Agape as they reopen the square. The group says it plans to carefully preserve everything at the intersection in Floyd's honor. Christian Cordero for CBS News, Minneapolis. Minneapolis police are not involved in the effort to open the intersection to traffic. When law enforcement are crossing the state to raise awareness about Special Olympics North Dakota, the good cause will cause a little traffic inconvenience in Fargo tonight. The 1800 block of 17th Avenue South in Fargo to 25th Street South will temporarily be closed starting at 630 for the Special Olympics of North Dakota Law Enforcement Torch Run. Well, if you're looking to buy your dream home, you may want to wait a bit longer. Coming up at noon, what's causing home prices to go up? And dangerous heat is on the way. Weather up next to plan your day safely with meteorologist Lisa Green.